Hey, what's up? It's Miglena from thepoledancer.com where I help pole dancers transition from pole fitness to pole dancing and I teach how to dance with fluidity and style. I've been wanting to create this video for ages because I constantly receive emails from pole dancers who are planning to buy a new home pole but are not sure exactly which one. Even more so since the beginning of the pandemics this year. So if you're in the same situation and if you'd like to learn which pole is best for you, then I hope that this video will help you. Let's start with which brands you can trust. First off, don't get deceived by cheap poles from Amazon. All pole dancers I know have regretted this later. Second, there might be some smaller local brands in some countries that are probably good and trustworthy, but I don't have any experience with them, so I can't give any specific recommendations here. That being said, the two brands that have become well-established internationally are Expo and Lupitpo. Expo is an older brand originally from the UK and is probably the most popular one worldwide. Lupit Po is a new brand from Slovenia that has become popular in the last few years and especially in 2020. They both sell good professional poles, but if you're torn between them, here's why I recommend Lupit Po in the first place and why I've become a bit hesitant to recommend Expo recently. The quality of Lupit Pose seems better, especially their installation and spinning experience. Also their customer support is outstanding. I've heard this before from other pole dancers, but now that I've dealt with both customer services, I can confirm that. During the pandemic lockdown this year, 2020, Lupit Pole continued producing and shipping poles from Slovenia worldwide while Expo stopped the shipping and their customer support was unreachable for a while. I'm pretty sure that Expo is now back in the business, but it's another reason that makes me a bit hesitant to recommend them. I've heard from studio owners who are working closely with Lupit Po that the engineers behind Lupit are constantly improving the performance of their poles based on the feedback of their customers. So I have the impression that they are running their business well, they are revol revolutionizing the market and are probably the best out there currently. That's why I recommend them in the first place. Finally, this shouldn't be the decisive argument, but if you decide to go for Lupit Po, you can save 5% of your purchase on lupitpo.com by using the code MIGLENA5. With this, you also support my work. This video is not sponsored by Lupit Po. As I've mentioned before, I always wanted to create this video so that I can refer to it whenever I receive questions about home poles. Which type of pole is best for you? Every manufacturer offers a FAQ page with information about choosing the right pole. Definitely check this out. Here's my advice based on my experience. You're probably going to go for a portable home pole rather than a one-piece studio pole. Especially if you're planning to move your pole to a different space or even to a different room within your house. Just check your ceiling first and make sure that it's concrete and it's not a fake plaster ceiling. A plaster ceiling will break easily. If you're a handyman or you know one, what you could do is cut through the plaster ceiling or build a construction underneath that will support the weight. If attaching a pole to the ceiling is not an option, consider getting a freestanding stage pole. Get a home pole that has both static and spinning mode. Unless you get motion sick easily, you don't want to miss out on the flying spinning experience. And you also don't want to miss the static mode. Expo is already offering a quick switch mechanism on their home poles. I was told by Lupit Pole that an upgraded version of their home poles with quick lock is going to be launched until the end of the year. 
Go for the standard width of 45 mm, unless you have particularly small hands. Then you might prefer 42 mm. A smaller diameter usually provides a more solid hand grip for spins, but it makes the grip in leg hooks more difficult and more painful. What about the pole finish? Now here comes the difficult part because this is very individual. You need to have tried different pole finishes to know exactly what works best for you. If you have the chance, visit local pole studios or check out friends' home poles. Besides of that, here are some things to consider. The grip on the pole depends on the type of your skin, dry or moist, as well as on the weather conditions, especially on the temperature, cold or warm, and on the humidity dry or moist. Metal poles are always slippery when they're cold. The more you warm up your body and the pole, the better the grip. Ideally, you have dry hands, but your body's skin is warm and slightly moist. I've made a list with the characteristics of the most common pole finishes. Let's start with stainless steel, which is the most durable material. So stainless steel is your best option if you have a nickel allergy. It works good for people with a slightly moist and tacky skin. It's good in a warm and humid climate, but it's harder to warm up in the cold. It's not so good for dry skin, but you can additionally use a boss demasterizer. Generally speaking, many pole dancers find this finish a little bit too slippery. Chrome is the most popular pole for pole studios and competitions. It works good in different climates, especially in colder ones. Just like on most poles, it's going to be slippery if you struggle with excessive sweating. Most people though find it stickier than stainless steel. Personally, I have a dry skin and I get along with it. Still need my body moisturizer, but it feels a little bit too greasy for me. Brass is the stickiest metal pole. It's considered to work well with sweat and humidity. Therefore, it's good for beginners who struggle with sweaty hands. I've heard that it's the most popular finish in Australia because of the climate. It might be though a bit too sticky for some moves, for example when performing slides, power spins and any rotations on the static pole. It's also recommended to polish the finish with a special product once in a while to protect from tarnish. The last finish I'd like to mention in this video is the powder coated pole. I've tried it a few times and personally for me it's too sticky because I like having this freedom of rotation around the pole. But if you struggle with excessive sweat, then it might be just right for you. It's also useful for outdoor shootings where it's cold and you need this extra grip. I've heard good things about the gecko grip finish of a brand called The Pole, which actually belongs to the Italian company AGM. I personally don't have experience with this kind of pose, but the people I know are happy with it. So if you struggle with grip, this might be an option to consider. These are the most popular finishes. And there's more to consider. You might have mixed skin, sweaty hands, but dry body skin. You might go from being too slippery at the beginning of your training session to too sticky at the end of the same training session. The weather conditions can also change. That's why it's important to have additional grip aid. Also here you need to experiment a lot to find out what works best for you. Personally, I use dry hands for my hands and a body masterizer for my dry body skin. I'm mixing this glycerin masterizer by myself and I have the recipe on my YouTube channel, 
but you could also order Dewpoint or a similar product. Keep in mind that most home poles are slippery when they are new. With usage, this slippery protective layer is going to wear off and is going to become more grippy. Let me share a quick personal story with you. For the last six years, I've been mainly training on an expo at home and on lupid poles in the studio. And I've occasionally tried other brands here and there. Recently, I switched to Lupid Pole at home because I was frustrated with the spin of my old pole. It used to stop spinning very early, already in the second trick in the air. I've tried making the pole less tight, reassembling it, lubricating the bearing, but there was still lots of resistance inside the pole. The customer support of Expo told me that it looks to be spinning fine, all poles will spin differently, this depends on height of the pole, ceiling and floor type, pole tension, the list goes on. This is probably true, but it didn't really help me. One of the USPs of Lupid Pole is that they provide a better spin. If you're a beginner, this might not be your concern at all. But as you become more advanced, staying and spinning long in the air might become important for you. So I wrote an email to Lupid Pole to their customer support asking which one of your poles provides the best spinning experience. And I received an email with three suggestions. Finally, I decided to go for a one-piece custom cut studio pole. It's not the typical extendable home pole. It's fixed to the ceiling and it has this beautiful quick switch between static and spinning. I really wanted to make sure that I never run out of spin again. I find it easier to slow down a fast spinning pole than to try to keep the spin going on a tight pole. It's almost impossible. I'm really happy with my new pole. It does indeed spin endlessly. You can check out my recent YouTube videos, especially the one that promotes the Aerial Flow class, demonstrates very well how long and how smooth you can spin in the air. With this story, I want to share with you what works best for me. Even though it's not fair to compare an extendable home pole with a one-piece studio pole. However, looking at the installation alone of Lupid Pole and X Pole, for me personally, Lupid Pole speaks for better quality. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments which type of pole you're considering buying. If you go for Lupid Po, you can use the code MIGLENA5 to get 5% off your purchase on lupidpo.com. With this, you also support my work. Thanks for watching and see you soon.